Alrighty fellas, welcome back to today's video. We're going to be doing something super cool today and that is Cerakoting this ACC chassis by our friends over at MDT who by the way happen to be the channel sponsor and who make badass products like this. Now, Pete, why on earth would you Cerakot a brand new chassis? That's a good question and here's why I want to do it. I have two others of these in the same color and I just want this rifle to be a little bit different. Now the first thing we have to do is disassemble it. I've already taken the buttstock off the main part of the chassis by um, taking this bolt off. Little pro tip if you're going to be doing that just maybe put some duct tape or masking tape on this portion of the chassis because it is kind of small to get in there with the big hex wrench and that you don't mar up the side of the chassis. But other than that we are going to just disassemble everything. I'm going to leave all the little trim bits in black because I think it's going to it's going to work nicely with what I sort of have in mind for the finished product. Now the look we're going to go for is this sort of look. Um, I've never done something like this. I've only Cerakoted one chassis ever before um, in plain in one color. So this is going to be a challenge, but that's kind of what we do on this channel. We push the boundaries of what we think we can do, and that's really the only way we learn. So we're going to start by completely disassembling this. I'm going to sort of try and take you guys through the process. However, it is pretty uh, noisy in the workshop where we'll be heading to now. So one thing is when you take off a little part like this, I know I should take it off for the Cerakote, and I probably will, but it's an absolute pain in the ass to put this little mag release back and I know that from past experience so I'm little take a little video to, so that you know where everything goes back but you kind of need four hands to put that thing back by yourself so I'm gonna have to get my wife to help me anyway I'm gonna strip this all down get it over to our sandblaster we're gonna sandblast the crap out of it make sure all the original um, finish is gone and the same thing with the buttstock and we're also going to remove this little front cap that they've got on there. This chassis is for a Remington 700 long action. That's why you see the giant magazine. Now here's where it gets interesting. I have a long range match this coming weekend. Today is Tuesday. On a Wednesday morning, we're taking this rifle out to go get data dope for the upcoming match. So we kind of have today to get everything done. Now why wouldn't you leave it for like next week? Because I want to show everybody what cool stuff we can do when we get to the long range match. So without further ado, I'm going to continue stripping all of this apart and then I will see you guys over once I get to the factory. We'll pick up the video from there. So. Right, so part of Cerakoting is that there's a lot of crap that flies around in the air. So you got to protect yourself. Please excuse the background noise. It is a machine shop of raw. And um, I have to put on my little outfit so that I don't ruin my shirt from my friends over at Legionnaire. Uh, oh shit. <laughs> I just lost my, my knee section. <laughs> ah, damn it. I'll have to get some masking tape and patch that up. Um, but for the most part, it is also helpful the sandblasting machine to keep myself dust free or I use that term very loosely so our sandblast machine does leak a little bit I'm gonna put my mask on and our next step is gonna be to head over to the sandblaster let me pop my glasses down by the way I Cerakoted my sunglasses the other day what do you guys think pretty cool more of a kind didn't want the branding on the side anymore, so I debranded them and seracoded them so they came out pretty freaking cool, I think. Okay, it's very noisy. I'm gonna head over to the sandblaster, pop our ACC in there, give her. I'm probably gonna spend about a half an hour doing this to get it absolutely perfect. It will be very difficult to film there, but I'll see what I can do. Okay, so it's pretty important that after you sandblast everything, you don't touch it again with your hands. So that's why we're going to be loving up, you know what they say, no love, no love. Um, so uh, 
I hope you guys can hear me alright over the machine shop. Now, what I also try and do, I try and tuck this in. By the way, I did fix my knee that I tore. Um, I'm going to show you guys that patch job in a minute. Um, right, let's do this. Now, to give you guys some perspective, this is the part that I've been working on. Uh, let me try to get this to focus on that. So, original color, and then we're obviously taking off the paint. You can sort of see it better here. But it is a very time consuming job. So, uh, it's going to take me probably at least 45 minutes to get this spot on. We have sort of, well not sort of, we have, there's going to be a super bad echo, so apologize for crappy audio, but we have sandblasted everything and it is almost perfect, it's not perfect perfect, but it's kind of, you have to find like the amount of time spent getting it perfect versus it's good enough to just get the product out the way. As I mentioned, it is quite urgent because I have a match this weekend. So we have like a little few tiny spots where there's a little bit of the original gray. But I'm not going to worry about that too much since our big first base coat is going to be um, Elite Black, which is pretty damn black. And um, so that's going to cover up any imperfections. So what I have to do now is I'm basically just going to use. Unfortunately, I don't have my big stainless steel tin we ordered um, for to get all the grease in the stuff off. So all I'm going to do now is spray everything off with some potent acetone, and that's going to get rid of any fine dust particles or a little bit of oil. Then we're going to bake it in the oven, which is this guy, Ooh, warm, over there, just to that any oil and stuff bakes out. If that is the case. We're going to degrease it once again and put it back in the oven. So, degreasing is your Don't you just love? That sound. Um, right, so uh, the chassis is in the oven doing what we call the bake out, or what they call the bake out. How do you like my sleeve, by the way? Um, now, I'm not too stressed about not having submerged the whole item in acetone, as you should decrease, degrease everything like a million percent when you're doing Cerakote. This chassis is brand spanking new, it's been Cerakoted, it hasn't really been handled much. So that should do the job. Also, at this point in time, I'm basically still practicing on my own gear with our Cerakote we have. Let me just, please. What you guys don't see is um, how warm that room is where I was doing the acetone and where we'll be doing the spraying because the spray booth is in the same room as the oven. We're gonna be using this Cerakote Elite Blackout as our base coat. Then I'm thinking um, maybe do a combination of concrete gray. What else do we have? Um, by the way, I can show you this, which I think some of you will find pretty cool. Let me try and not disturb it. This is what FDE Cerakote looks like. This is a jungle green. Now, Sarah is short for ceramic coating so this almost makes can you see that it's like a solid block on the top there so when you're thinking about using Cerakote you better be ready to do some shake and bacon literally shake and that could be our Cerakote series the name of our Cerakote series shake and bake um, I'm probably gonna spend the better part of 10 minutes shaking these four bottles so as I said 
We're gonna go base coat in the Elite Black. Then I'm gonna try and model the manners. Let me grab the manners here. Sort of camouflage pattern, which, let me focus the camera for you. And this is basically what we're working with. So it looks like there's a little bit of splatter. Uh, let me do that. A little bit of splatter. Uh, David, I'm just busy here. Okay. Just put the broom outside, thank you. David wants to come put the broom away. Um, so there seems to be some splatter sort of in areas like this here. Also with like little dots all over the show, but I'm not so crazy about the little dots. Let me zoom you guys back out. Right, so how am I gonna achieve this look? Cerakote in black, then I'm gonna use some of our baby's little So you open things if you're a man. Mmm, smells good. It's been scented, obviously. I'm gonna use a little a holy sponge, um, like a little sea sponge thing. Dip it into the Cerakote and not putting it into the spray gun. And then I'm gonna just blotch my way around in random patterns. Now, when you're planning things like this, it's obviously quite difficult to do random plan patterns. So I've never done this. As I said, it might be a complete disaster, but then we can just sandblast it and do it over again. And as I said, I'm training myself, learning, practicing, whatever the correct term is. I'm not really English to do that. Anyway, so let me get you shaking some bottles and um, I'll see you guys in the spray booth. Okay, right, so everything's being baked down to cool down a little bit. I'm gonna start by spraying the little end cap first. I have adjusted my spray gun to the settings. I think are correct, as I said, this is kind of learning on the job. The chassis is down here, just getting ready, and I'm just gonna do a nice smooth coat. Obviously, with a complicated part like that, you have to make sure that you don't get too much overspray when you're trying to fill in all those holes. One thing I did struggle with the previous time I did this was the actual spray gun pushing the part. Um, so we want to hold on to the part. So what I'm gonna do today is just hook something like that in that I can hold it steady. Right, let's go. Does this not make me look super cool? Breaking bad. There we go. <laughs> Alright. Okay. There goes nothing. Chassis has done its pre-bake. This is dry to the touch. It's still a little bit warm, but it's dry to the point where I'm not gonna leave any finger marks on it when touching it. So what we're gonna do now is the tricky bit where it's make or break. Now I've got the manners back there. It's lining up perfectly, but it's back there as a reference point that I can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, I don't think with this style of camouflage you can sort of screw it up because it's kind of just random. Is the chassis spray job I did perfect? No, it's not. I missed a few spots, but I didn't miss, but it's like not, it's not money. But now with the little touching up, we can fix that. So I've, I'm going to start my way with the darkest color first. I'm going to do three colors, the concrete gray 
All of this is from the Cerakote. Oops, I accidentally pushed the eyedropper. This is from the Cerakote Elite series. I'm not going to spray this on. I'm going to throw it out into this sort of um, lid here behind me, and then take my scented little sponges and sort of just start blobbing my way around this chassis hoping to get a good result so please this is the point where you should keep your fingers crossed because I don't know how this is going to go I'm going to bring you guys closer and then we're going to start so what's important is I'm not going to dab the sponge in this and go straight onto the chassis system I'm going to sort of dry dab it here on this piece of paper just to get rid of that sort of initial color right gents I'm super nervous <laughs> start away from the back and try and not touch anything so let's get it rid of it oh my shepherd knows here we go Okay, right, so I forgot to hit record when we were doing the jungle green blotches. It looks pretty good so far. I'm pretty pumped. I'm super excited to see how it looks once it's all put together. Last step, FDE. I'm going to go shake some bottles. This is going to bake so it's dry to the touch. I must say I should be a little bit more patient, but I'm pushed for time, so I'm kind of burning my fingers as I'm holding on to the aluminum or aluminum, depending where you're from to complete this bowl in time so I can leave it in the oven to bake out for two hours so that I can kind of get home at a reasonable time to assemble this bad boy to go shooting tomorrow so that we can want to match hopefully this weekend our first long range match with the right calibers so we'll see hold thumbs I'm trying to sort of keep my hands to the inside Doing all the little blotchy things, sorry it was difficult to film and the Cerakote starts hardening up as it happens, so managing the camera, damn it, I got Cerakote on the camera trying to fiddle with the camera to get you guys a better view, so sorry I didn't do a great job of that, I kind of need someone almost to manage the camera when we do stuff like this, this is not the last time we're going to do this. I think I kind of went a little bit overboard with the blotchy thingies. We'll see once it comes out and the rifle's assembled. So now we basically have to leave it in the oven to bake for two hours so we can run some other errands. You guys aren't joining for that and we'll be back at the reloading bench just like... Right, so it's the next day. We didn't go shooting this morning. The schedule just wouldn't allow it. So we pushed that until Friday, but that's a good thing because I get to make another video for you guys about what we're going to be doing pre-match, how to gather dope for a long range rifle match. So. Why are we all still here? We want to see what this project came out like. Now personally, I am so happy with our final result that we got. Let me try show this camera a little bit better so you guys can see that. There we go. Um, so that it focuses on the chassis. I am pumped really beyond belief. 
Bear in mind, this is my first time ever attempting something like this. It wasn't rocket science as you guys would have seen throughout the video. Um, I hope you guys are super observant when you're watching these videos, by the way, because I noticed in my six Creed video that I did, a bunch of you were concerned about my itchy beard. But if you go watch that section back about the itchy beard, that was like a complete gimmick. All I did was I went like this and then when the video cut back, I literally just wiped off my beard. So I'm going to overlay that now because I am so freaking itchy. And as you'll see, my it beard was completely gone. Anyway, let's pop this guy into its chassis and uh, see what that final product looks like, shall we? So I've done this many times before. I'm going to skip it. So for you guys, I will just go like this. Bam! And just like that, we have a complete rifle. I am super, 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 super happy with how this project came out. I'm going to show you guys some smoky B-roll and more than likely some smoky footage because by the time this video goes up, I will have shot the match and I would have taken some cool pictures that I can edit into the video. Let me know what you guys think about the project. As I said, my first time, it's certainly not perfect, but the good thing with doing sort of a camera pattern like this, you almost can't mess it up because any imperfection is meant to kind of look like it's meant to be there, right? Because it's like a random look. So I'm stoked. One thing still to do, I need to swap out the little standard um, cheek piece with the carbon fiber one because I think Vortex AMG custom action, it will just make it pop. So I want to do that. And I still need to do a last little bit of laser engraving on my muzzle brake for this match. It's just a small little tribute to a few people out there. I will overlay some footage of that too. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching another one of my videos. I really appreciate it. Please leave a comment, like the video, dislike the video, whatever you choose to do. I have put together a little playlist at the end with some of my other bold videos I've done. If you're interested in watching one of those, do check it out. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.